There's people protesting the pride parade, so I'm gonna go undercover and uh, infiltrate them. I think I'm gonna fit in. Should we give out Bud Light at children's libraries? No. So BYOB. BYOB, everyone. Did you know that attendance at Drag Story Hour is mandatory? Did you know that attendance at Drag Story Hour is mandatory? Hey, pal, go away. Pal, go away. Go away. Hey, officer, can you get this guy away from me, please? I'm just exercising my Fifth Amendment rights. I mean, I'm being intimidating. I mean, come on. I'm grooming him right Isn't now. Is this why you guys are here to stop confrontation? The, the cop just said I'm in a public space. Wow. No, Dude, where are we? You are you taking my picture? I can't be on Facebook. Oh no! Don't put me on Facebook. He's gonna put me on the internet. I've been outed. They're gonna out me. Oh my God! Not Facebook. Wait, that guy didn't want to be on video. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch of police here. They're not forming a protective circle around these people. They said to the cops, hey, this guy's harassing me. And the guy's like, hey, it's a public space. Idiot. That was so out of character for the cops. I prefer it. But you know, like trying not to do his job. He's such a fragile he asked him a man. Question he didn't like, and yeah. then he called for the cops. And then he agreed with the cops. He agreed with the cops. He, oh yes, of course, yes. First Amendment. Uh, cor that is correct, sir. Because the police are always right all the time, especially when they're wrong. As if the cop is like a constitutional scholar. That's right. Constitutional law. Well, the cops, they just call it con law. Con law. Yeah, they're like, you know, you con law, bro? Yeah, you just, hey, bro, you took con law? Bro, how many years of con law did you take, bro? But thank you for coming. Yeah. I was so excited. I was like, it's him! <laughs> Tell me why you're at um, Pride. Because I'm transgender. Do you want to share anything about your journey? It was very tough. Does your family make you feel supported? Yes, a lot. How old are you? I am seven. And how old were you when you discovered your identity? I was two or three when I first noticed that I didn't feel comfortable with being a boy. How did your child discover this identity? How did this come about? So ever since she was little, she was always a princess, always. She sort of like, every once in a while, would mention ideas of like wanting to be a girl, of feeling more like a girl. And then she started asking to like socially transition about a year and a half ago. And her school's been fantastic. Your family, your friends, everyone like makes you feel supported and loved. Except for my friends. I, I didn't tell them that yet. Oh, wait, do you want to be on the internet tell, talking about it then? Yeah, okay. I hope to be famous one day. What do you want to be famous for? Uh, probably my songs or like famous drawings. It wasn't even really a change. Um, like she's been expressing herself as a girl since she was old enough to get dressed. I think that being the parent of a trans child is totally different than what people think that it is. And I know you hear a lot about um, how we're, again, we're gonna have our kids go into surgery and how we're forcing them to make these decisions. The opposite is true. You know, I'm up all the time worrying about how the world is going to react to my kid. I would rather have her change her pronouns a thousand times than have to write her obituary. I wish that people who have already decided that they hate us and that we're child abusers would actually talk to us. I feel like that would make such a big difference. But you're right, like the assumptions that people are making are the worst kinds of assumptions and nobody wants to hear, you know, what our truth is. What it's like to actually raise a transgender child um, is just so remarkably different than what I would have experienced or thought. What do you, what do you say? To... Okay, so... What do, you, what do you say to the people that accuse you of doing Munchausen by proxy? So I think that the assumption for that is that, and I, I hope this is taken in the spirit of what it's, it's, it's met, is that that means that we wanted to have a transgender child. And I love her no matter what, but I don't think any parent wants their child born into something in which they know that they're going to struggle. It goes against the idea of parenting for me. We have all sorts of books. We have a whole library at our house about um, you know kids and what their experience is and how they present themselves and what it means to be you. Um, and so we didn't give her 
you know, we didn't push her in any direction, certainly, um, and we will never push her in any direction if she decides in, you know, two, three, four, ten years that this is not where she's at, you know, that's okay with me. So if your child wants to change their pronouns back and express their gender differently, you're like, hey, cool. Yeah, no, it's not, who she is is not her gender, and it's not like the words that she chooses to use, it has nothing to do with it. But I think what's funny is that a lot of transphobic people make fun of gender expression. They don't believe in gender expression, yet they turn around and say, you have to raise your boys to be men. They're like, wait, so we have to teach our children to be men? You have to teach them to be women? So you're saying it's a construct. No, no, how, how dare you? No, I absolutely agree with you. Um, I, I, people want to assign all sorts of things to children, especially that they're not even capable of that kind of thought. Um, and you know that's super problematic as well. There's no part of my child I don't love and I would never choose for them a life where I know that they're gonna struggle and I know that I have to fear for them every day, but yeah. it's not, I would never choose that for her. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much, thank you. Can I yeah, give you a hug? Absolutely. Thank you. This is so funny, she's like, I wanna be interviewed. I was like, I, I was like, okay, sure. We always joke that it's like her world and we're just living in it. This indoctrination stuff has gone way too far. I had an unsupervised weekend with my son. Uh, he's in the second, uh, third, third grade. And uh, I brought him to Hooters. <laughs> the first thing he asks the waitress is, uh, what are your pronouns? And it was embarrassing. You're saying that we're indoctrinating kids, but you are bringing your son to Hooters. Um, who do you not see the problem? Women are wearing, it's Hooters. Well, how's that different than bringing your uh, child to Drag Story Hour? Or naked. But I saw a video on Libs of TikTok where they were like dressed like um, uh, like a strip club. Right. Well, and it was, internet, a strip club. The internet is different than real life. The internet is not real life. That is not real life. Internet is fake. So you're saying Often. Libs of TikTok is not real? No, it's not real. I'm sure some of the stuff that on there are real and okay. maybe sometimes the stuff happens, but not a lot. It is a lot different than taking your two-year-old, or what, your second grade son, third grade son to Hooters. It's been a long time since I've had an unsupervised visit Why with my son. Supervised? You're an adult. I know, but you know what? I shouldn't have to be supervised. Thank you. What? My visits with my own son should be unsupervised. Okay. I just had to start, you know, catching up on my child support. What I'd be like, that's cancel saying? culture. It's cancel culture. <laughs> that's not cancel culture. That's you being a bad dad. Drag queens and all that, they aren't overly sexualizing women and creating a really, like, horrible image for them. You can walk over there and look at the drag queens, and they're not showing anything. They're in full-length clothing, and they're just performing a show. They're being very respectful. They're also giving out water and making sure everybody's staying healthy and safe the entire time. They're also not naked. Maybe you should stop this like line of generational trauma where you're pushing this like toxic idea of uh, masculinity onto your children. We're too soft on our children. We don't spank them anymore. Well, that's abuse. That's because that's that's it's illegal. It's been they illegal. They call it trauma bonding. Well, they, they stop. <laughs> you know, gender expression, it's just silly. But um, I want to raise my <laughs> child to be a man. I'm sorry. With that, Gender so. expression is silly, but you want to raise your boy to be a man. Can you repeat is that? that? I feel like yeah. yeah. That is gender Wait. expression. You want your son to have gender expression, but you're saying. Yeah, I'm gonna, I want to. Expression is silly. Yeah, I want to raise my boy to be a man. <laughs> they're, they're Wait, I feel like the dog wants to talk. <laughs> yeah. <Go> on, <laughs> you're you're up. If it's a construct. Then why do I have to raise my boy to be a man? You don't. Have Nobody to told you that you have to do that. You are choosing to raise your boy to be a man. No one has ever. You brought said your son to anyone. Hooters. Like, but I feel like so wherever you go, there's just this um, a lot of indoctrination, right? Like TikTok, you, TikTok, the algorithm. So look at my TikTok feed. Yeah. It's men chopping wood, bodybuilding. The algorithm is based on what you like. The algorithm is based on what you enjoy, what you keep liking and favoriting. Well, maybe like, it's you know, good. my ex-wife got into my account and she liked all these things that guys chopping wood. Valid. What do you think about like kids who are seeing stuff like Andrew Tate? Is that not indoctrination as well? I uh, signed up for Andrew Tate's Hustler University. What? And I just have to sign up three more people and I'm gonna start making the money. Sign up for an Andrew Tate like pyramid scheme? Or it's a pyramid scheme but I'm at the top of the pyramid. No, you're not. I'm, you're I'm Pharaoh. The pharaohs were at the are bottom because they're dead. That's how a pyramid works. The pharaohs are under the pyramid. The pharaohs are dead and they're under the pyramid. So then obviously it's not a pyramid scheme because I'm not dead that is why it's a and pyramid I'm scheme. at the top of the pyramid. Okay, it's supposed to trick you into thinking you're not in a pyramid scheme. So it's called an affiliate link. 
and every major corporation has uh, an affiliate link and as long as other people sign up for his Hustler University using my affiliate link, I think we'll be just fine. Um, so I wanted to teach my children about the dangers of socialism. So what I did is I set up a lemonade stand and I had them uh, sell lemonade all day. So, and at the end of the day, I said, hey, well, who paid for that table? It's my table. So I charged them for the table. I charged them for all the lemonade ingredients. So they made $35 and I subtracted uh, $26 in supplies and costs and they were left with $9. And that is how I taught them about socialism. Okay, so what do you, what do you think socialism is? People that sit home, they don't work and they get paid for not working. That's not what you just said with your lemonade stand. Why are you teaching your kids below 10 years old okay, about okay. socialism. Okay, so you're upset about critical race theory, which is a high school level subject, but you're teaching your seven and like eight or nine year old socialism? About the dangers of socialism. About the dangers of socialism. The dangers of taking your son to Hooters. Yeah, what about the dangers of that? <laughs> and guns. And guns. Do you support mm. the Second Amendment? Yeah, and so the thing is oh, we have- school shootings we, have there been this year? Like and yeah, and so 157. We, This is my plan to keep schools safe. Is yeah, I, what are you gonna do to I want the schools to um, have be filled with cops. Maybe like the cops can be teachers, and the students can also be cops, and we can build a panopticon. We build a panopticon. So a prison. You're taking ideas from South Park as to what should be happening okay, in our schools. South Park and TikTok are your references for this interview. Libs of TikTok. South Park and TikTok are your Libs of TikTok. Libs of TikTok are your references for yes. this interview. What are you protecting your family from? Like with your guns? You know, these people from the inner cities uh, that are in the opioids and stuff like that. What? Bail reform. The bail reform. What, why, you're just pulling out big words out of your ass. <laughs> you, you have you, no idea what didn't. they mean. We should ban teachers what from teaching about gender, but I said. should be able to teach about gender. I should be able to go to universities and teach it. Do you know how people become teachers? You have to like get anointed by George Soros or something. <laughs> I, I think that's a little bit far off. My mom works at a school and she had to go to college and then she had to go to graduate school. And now she teaches critical race theory. What do you think critical race theory is? Um, it's like... Um, <laughs> So it's like when you teach like history and stuff like that. Um, that's and not it... critical race theory. Critical race theory is like how race impacts a lot of our culture. Critical race theory is taught in college, college levels. So let me ask you something. My cousin came over the other day and she tells us all that, uh, oh, today I learned that George Washington's teeth came from slaves. Do you think that's an appropriate lesson? for a second year law student? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes that is okay. exactly. <laughs> Can I say something? Last say time I checked, uh, law school is about learning the Constitution. Yes, but you can also learn other things as electives. You can choose other classes, and you can learn about history when you're in a law school. But, but you said you wanted to teach at a university. No, what? No, I wanted to speak at a university. Just go there to speak, to, to, to okay. deprogram people. You have to be a pretty important I mean, if Matt Walsh does it all the time. Matt Walsh? Who is that? Matt Walsh? He, he's like the Daily Wire guy that my brother's obsessed with. <laughs> Brother. Austin. Oh my god, that's so He cool. likes Matt Walsh? He's obsessed with Matt Walsh. Okay, the well. I've heard some of his videos. He just spews an like anti-trans stuff. He spews stuff that he has nothing to do with and honestly don't matter. If you want to talk about... This person's brother, I had a conversation with him, I had a debate with him, and he repeated the same two things that That's didn't go together doing. at all. He, he kept saying that racism wasn't real and then that white people experience racism, which doesn't make any sense together. Using their brother as your source plus TikTok, the libs of TikTok, and South and South Park as your source is really not getting that far. When you realize that you're losing the conversation, you switch to another topic. That's yeah. completely yeah, that's like, that's how you win debates and own the that's, lips. That's how, um, no, that's how you avoid being wrong because you don't want to be wrong because you, I mean, you know you're wrong. You know you're wrong. Switching subjects switch is subjects called facts and logic. Have you been to college? What? No. Ew. <laughs>
you drop out of high school? I passed the test, and it's the high school test. You were being very vague. How like long a are you few, school? maybe six years. Six years you were you in know, high school? You hear about kids, they take a gap year. People take gap years in college. No, you can, I, I took a gap year. How do you take a gap year? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I took a gap year, but I stayed in the high school while I took the gap year. And I took the same class that I took the year before. You didn't take a gap year. You redid a grade because you failed the first time. You know what? That's just your opinion. Because I'm a tolerant person, I will respect your opinion. Nothing you have said in this whole entire like conversation has ever been tolerant of you know anything. What tolerant means? It's when you let uh, people like Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh come and speak at your university. That's not what tolerance means. You didn't go to university. You are interviewing the kids that you say. Yes, have and the I'm. Capacity to vote. Yes. You don't have the mental you capacity to vote. <laughs> you took gap years in high school. Everyone takes a, a gap Nobody year. Nobody takes a gap year. Then like how are you supposed to get your high school equivalency uh, degree? You repeat a year. Have you uh, graduated high school? I have not. Okay, then. This is America. It's the land of the free. If, you know, if you wanted to take a gap year and repeat your senior year, I would support that. You know. I didn't repeat it. I did. You also did another one. <laughs>I love how we are also hyper traumatized that we don't know what to do <laughs> in a safe space. Someone messaged us, so someone messaged us and said, "Hey, Proud Boys and Moms for Liberty might show up to counter this. Can we have some support?" Well, so we yeah, sure. so, so we showed up. Great. Yeah. And now, we're here and it's so positive and lovely. And like none of us know what to do with ourselves when things are positive, positive. safe. 